Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got into this situation. Well, the truth is, I'm an introvert. Oh my gosh, guys, she's literally me. She's literally me, guys. She's literally me, guys. Hey, you! Yes, you. Do you struggle to socialize with other people? Do you spend too much time indoors? Of course you do, you're an anime fan. <laughs> but don't worry, you're not the only one. And a new anime has come out that will make you laugh on the outside and cry on the inside. Introducing Bochi the Rock. This is Bochi, an unstable ball of anxiety who wants desperately to become famous but can't even bring herself to talk to a single person. Oof. So instead, she spends the entirety of her childhood practicing guitar, promising herself that she will start a band someday. She then goes through all of middle school and does nothing. Oh. She goes to high school and is now starting to panic as she realizes she's running out of time. So she decides to do something about it. This fails at first, but eventually it leads to her being grabbed by someone else to join their band in a desperate situation. And as a result, needing to finally face her anxiety head on while striving to be the best she could be and also hopefully become famous. Now, I really like this anime, for a lot of reasons. It's cute, it's funny, and most importantly, I can make money off of it. It also got very popular. At the time I started watching this show, I was under the impression that it was super underappreciated and thought, oh, I need to make a video on it to spread the word of how awesome this anime truly is. I was wrong, everyone already knows. Timelines filled with fan art, clips, memes. They made a goddamn copy pasta and I can't stop seeing it everywhere. For whatever reason, this anime that came out of nowhere absolutely exploded, even surpassing and rating some of the biggest names that season, some of which having huge amounts of hype backing it up, only to be overtaken by this. You know what, I don't blame them. But aside from having infinite amounts of meme potential, what exactly is it about this show that caused people to like it so much? When it first started airing, practically no one had heard of it. And while it's easy to point out the fact that there are cute girls in it and go, of course the anime community would love that. There are plenty of these types of shows that are coming out every season that largely fire under the radar, so I don't think it's that. And by concept alone, it's not really doing anything special either. From what it sounds like, it's basically just doing the same thing that Kaon did over a decade ago. No, in my opinion, the first thing that caused Bochi to stand out, what caused so many people to enjoy the show as much as we did are the guillotines in 19th century France. Execution. To me, Bochi is the perfect example of exactly what I want in a good slice of life anime. Now for those of you who don't know, slice of life is basically a genre that focuses more on character interactions, comedy, and laid back vibes rather than having a more traditional type of plot, usually having a bit more of a realness to it as it shows different aspects of these characters' lives, hence the name slice of life. And I do very much enjoy it, in fact it's gotten to the point where I'd much rather watch a bunch of characters talk about nothing rather than another epic large scale fight scene for the 5 billionth time, but I do still have my full of it. Mostly having to do with its subgenre, cute girls doing cute things, or <coughs> for short. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's a slice of life, but the majority of the characters are girls who are specifically designed to be as cute as possible and are put into situations that are super wholesome and relaxing, thus catering to millions of tired people across the globe. Now I gotta say, when it comes to cute stuff in general, I don't mind it. In fact, many times I actually quite enjoy it depending on the way it's handled. The problem is that most of the time with cute girls doing cute things specifically, it's too much. When I see the sparkles and the big eyes and the high-pitched voices and the oh, I'm oh, kid and the small part of me immediately wants to commit seppuku right then and there. Some shows exaggerate this to the point where it's not even cute anymore. It's just annoying. I don't judge anyone who does enjoy it, but it just isn't for me. But every time it does pop up, I usually find myself tolerating it until it moves on to the next part that I actually care about. So whenever there's a show that does have the cute designs, it has the visual appeal, it has every opportunity and all the ingredients that just shove it all into your face, but instead it just leaves it, I appreciate it so much more for that. That's what Boji does. There is so much subtlety and naturalism in the way that Boji presents itself here, and I absolutely love it. It may not sound like it's doing anything mind-blowing for the genre, but it's still delivered with such well-done execution that it still comes across as fresh. The show managed to find that exact right balance of comedy, wholesomeness, and realness that comes across as surprisingly down-to-earth and genuine. Of course, there are still elements of <coughs> there, since it is a part of the genre, but it's either toned down or exists for the sake of a running joke, like with Kita. And even then, it's used sparingly. I also really love the entire rock visual aesthetic that it leans into, which actually mixes together with the cute stuff surprisingly well. It's a great combination, and the two styles complement each other really nicely. And despite it being a slice of life, I never really got the sense that what was happening was ever a waste of time, or was irrelevant to what was happening. Every scene felt like it served a purpose of some kind and would always contribute to the larger narrative. And it does this throughout the entire show. So yes, it does have a plot that continues on from the previous episode. A simple one, but that's exactly what I want from a slice of life. The characters always had something they were aiming to 
do and had real aspirations. Even in the scenes where they were just goofing off, they still always had some kind of purpose, and we always had a solid idea of where things were headed after that. And the plot was actually about music! It's basically the K-On that I always wanted, but never got. And now I have it! Of course, K-On was trying to do something very different, and to compare the two is basically comparing apples and oranges, but I still wanted a slice of life anime that actively focused on music, and Boshi did that for me, which is why I personally prefer it. However, there's something else that stood out to me about this show, something unique that I don't see very many slice of life anime do very often. But before I get into that, I have story! This is past Bochi, and she is doing something incredibly tragic. She's trying to Google something embarrassing on incognito mode. But what she doesn't know is that you can still find exactly what she searched up simply by checking the logs on her internet provider. This is bad. If someone else saw, she would most definitely melt into ash and die. In order to fix this, she'd have to mask her internet identity and go truly invisible by getting a VPN. Which is super convenient because this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. But there's a problem. Rio has borrowed all her money again and never gave it back, so she basically stole it. So now she's practically broke. But no need to worry, for Atlas is currently offering a huge deal of getting Atlas VPN Premium for just $1.83 a month, plus 3 months extra, and with a 30 day money back guarantee, so she can actually afford it. And all she needs to do is click the link in the description. And it has so many more uses than just that, Boji. You can get better deals while shopping online, block ads and malware, and even get notified if someone's trying to steal your data, all on unlimited devices. Heck, there are a bunch of great shows that I want to watch on Netflix but can't because it just doesn't show up in my country. But turn on Atlas VPN and boop, choose a country where it is available and bam, there it is. You better be quick if you want to get it though, since they're only offering this deal for a limited time. Again, it's only $1.83 per month plus three months extra and with a 30 day money back guarantee just by clicking the link in the description. Be like Boji. She may be socially incompetent, but at least now she feels safe on her computer. All thanks to Alice VPN. Now back to the video. Let's say you had a joke where the main character simply feels like she's being replaced. Do you A, show her panicking, B, show her being depressed, or C, deteriorate her into five different animation styles and send her flying into a brick wall? If you chose the last one, you'd have the amazing world of Gumball. And also Brochi the Rock. Whenever they're presented with the opportunity to simply tell a joke in the way it needs to be told, they take things a step further and add spice to it, asking itself how it can take the joke and present it in a more creative and unconventional way. And the results of this have created some of the most wildly creative moments that a lot of you have probably already seen. Brochi simply not wanting to create a social media account turned into her collapsing on the floor and breaking reality. Her being reminded of what sports festivals were like turned into an 80s anime style recreation of her being burned at the stake. She gets surprised and turns into a Picasso painting. Brochi running off the and it immediately cuts the waterfall footage with whimsical music playing in the background. Freaking exploding. It straight up uses live action footage on multiple occasions purely for the heck of it. Nobody on the art team needed to go as hard as they did for these jokes, but they did. The sheer amount of creativity put into them really makes it that much more memorable. And aside from that, the jokes themselves are just really well delivered, including the regular ones. I've noticed that in a lot of comedy anime, even the ones that I like, a lot of them would have this weird sense of timing, where they'd say the joke, but they'd keep it going for just that half second too long where it feels awkward. Or the way the voice actors were directed to say their lines just kind of fell flat. The joke almost works because the idea is funny and it worked well in the manga, but it's like the director didn't quite understand how to convey the joke in the way it was supposed to be, so it just kind of gets an awkward laugh instead. But here, it's very different. Out of curiosity, I skimmed through different parts of the manga, it's a 4 coma by the way, and honestly, compared to the anime, it's kind of lacking? It's not terrible by any means, but by themselves, the jokes just seem a bit plain. Which means the anime did the reverse of what usually happens by getting jokes that were originally sort of meh, and then adding so much on top of it and delivering it with such spot on comedic timing that it makes it a thousand times funnier than the idea on its own. It basically did the opposite. Like there was this one scene where Bochi got the group photo and printed it and stuck it to her roof. In the manga, this part just came across as kind of unsettling and not as funny. But in the anime, she's doing her entire monologue and then... <laughs> That cut was perfect! The way it revealed the room and you just gasp and it immediately cuts to the end credits is glorious. There are so many moments like these throughout that I just couldn't list them all. This is largely dependent on your sense of humor, of course, but for me personally, the jokes were either hilarious or it moved on too quickly for me to notice that it wasn't. Just from watching it, I really got the feeling that the director gets comedy and has a great sense of humor. Like when a friend tells a joke where the idea isn't particularly special on its own, but you just can't help but laugh at the way they said it. And to top it all off, Bochi's voice actress just sells it all perfectly. The weird little little noises that she makes and the nervous breakdowns that somehow manage to come across as enduring instead of annoying, the... Huh. 
あいやこ,こ,これ買ったはいいんですけど1日で挫折して今から質屋さんに売りに行くとこだったんですえもっとふさわしい人にこのギターを使ってもらって大空へ羽ばたいてほしくてああ私は全然弾けませんすみませんああ何円で売れるかな今日は焼肉だーあ,あ私もうギターとベースがかかっちゃおうかなえっ普通に。There's just something so hilarious about Bochi going on stage to perform. And she's just in a cardboard box. I know I'm just rambling at this point, and none of this stuff is really that mind blowing or game changing, but that's kind of the point. The show isn't really meant to be this huge thing, and I don't think anyone anticipated how much of an impact this show ended up having, but it just hit all the right spots of what I wanted out of a slice of life and executed those parts really well. It's just really fun. But I think the biggest reason that it ended up becoming so big and resonating with so many different people is because of. <laughs> Hitori Goto, aka Bochi, is so relatable to the point where it scares me. Almost every single thing she did and said was the anime equivalent of I'm in this photo and I don't like it. Examples include hearing someone else laughing and assuming they're laughing at you specifically, not wanting to post pictures of yourself on social media because it makes you feel like an attention whore, being expected to invite people to an event but not having any friends to invite, your brain suddenly reminding you of that random cringy thing you did in the past at the middle of the night, assumes that because you're a minor inconvenience to someone else that you suddenly deserve the death penalty, is quiet and socially awkward in real life but suddenly gains confidence online. Not wanting to butt into a conversation because you'd feel like an intruder, so you just awkwardly stand there. Suddenly hearing someone else talk about your hyperfixation, and you just jump. Going to school wearing something you're interested in, hoping that somebody, anybody, will go up to you to talk to you about it, but nobody does, and you go home disappointed. I won't do that thing that I know I'm supposed to be doing, but I will spend ages working on a totally different thing nobody asked for. Your entire self worth is based on a talent that you're somewhat confident at, but as soon as that's criticized, you're a worthless human being with no value whatsoever. But on the flip side, you get praised, and you immediately melt into a puddle of jelly. And What do you know it? She just also happens to have a YouTube channel with over 30,000 subscribers where she finds comfort with other people like her, but she hasn't uploaded anything in ages and now she's panicking because everyone's leaving! <laughs> These are only few of the many relatable situations it gives us and it does not stop, with some of them being so damn specific that it feels targeted at me personally. Now, obviously, it wasn't everything completely that I related to, since there were other times where I just didn't relate to her at all, but that's because Bochi's our own character and different people will relate to different aspects of her. It still didn't. Enough that it felt like someone out there actually gets it, and that I'm not the only one. Even situations I initially thought weren't like me at all ended up turning around and punching me in the stomach, hitting way too close to home. Like in a scene where it's the holidays and Boshi just sits at home doing basically nothing all day, which is accurate. But then she says that it was a super fulfilling day, and I was like, eh. But then I turned around and went, oh, who am I kidding? I've wasted the entire summer and I haven't achieved anything. And I was like, yep. That's it. If you happen to have a YouTube channel or even just do anything creative, you may also appreciate a lot of scenes from this. Like, even just in the first episode, it actually hits Bochi that there are real life people out there who've seen her music before and were impacted by it in some way. It was a small moment, but it meant something. Sometimes, as a content creator, you just forget how many people there are out there behind the screen who've seen your videos. And when it hits you that those people are actually real and that they remember something that you made, It's a special feeling. Also, I have more subscribers. Suck it, Boji! I believe what made Boji's portrayal so meaningful to so many people had more to do than with just the comedy. Yeah, there were a lot of moments that are also exaggerated for comedic effect, but more often than not, many of Boji's thoughts and feelings and the situations she were placed in were all things that many of us had experienced before. It doesn't just portray her as a stereotypical quiet or antisocial girl, but instead takes the time to narrate her thought processes, letting us see things through her point of view. With many of them being dead accurate to how it feels in that moment, and most definitely comes from a writer who experiences some of this herself. But what fascinates me the most about Bochi is that she isn't just shy or wants to be left alone like many introverts are portrayed as. Because despite her anxiety, She wants attention. This is so damn refreshing because so many times introverts in media are portrayed as leave me alone, I don't want to talk to anyone, which isn't necessarily true. Yeah, some people may be like that, but for many of us, we do still want to have friends and even be popular. Heck, they could even be loud and annoying just like me. It's just that it also drains mental energy for us to talk to other people, so we gotta go home to be by ourselves afterwards to recharge. That's all it means to be an introvert. Which, funnily enough, Bushi literally states out loud as she's running away. Looking at Bushi's quiet and withdrawn personality, And her little mannerisms, many would assume from an outside perspective that she just doesn't want to talk to people. But the show makes it clear that that isn't the case. She does have dreams and goals. She wants to be able to perform live on stage and become famous. And when she goes to school, she does internally hope that someone will go up and talk to her. It's just that when the situation actually happens, she panics. 
And it's not because she doesn't want them to be there, it's because she's scared she's gonna say the wrong thing or muck things up somehow. And that's realistic. When Nijika grabs her to join the band, she's internally excited at the prospect of it, but it doesn't look like it from the outside. Because at the same time, she's flooded with panic since she doesn't know what to do or say, praying that Nijika doesn't think that it was a mistake to bring her along, but it's exactly because of that panic that causes Nijika to think that maybe it was a mistake to bring her along. The show makes it abundantly clear that her social anxiety was never a choice. It's something she has to deal with. And whenever it shows a dream sequence with Bochi imagining herself on stage, she's noticeably more confident and sure of herself, as well as there being plenty of moments where she imagines herself as being cool and an outgoing party lover. Even in the end credits, there's a cute little detail where Bochi acts totally differently compared to usual. Here, she's just so dang happy with her guitar and full of life. Which, by the way, I'm willing to bet is actually Bochi in the future. Just, you know, I guess. But regardless, these are the versions of herself that she wants to be. She doesn't want to freeze up and stutter every time she tries to talk to somebody, but at the same time, she can't get out of her own head. This sits in stark contrast with someone like Ryo, someone who does fit the archetype of the stereotypical loner who just wants to be left alone and doesn't socialize as much. And while both her and Bochi do share the similarity of being introverts that don't have that many friends, the show makes it clear that they're very different. Ryo wants to be alone, by choice. She's pretty much completely satisfied with how she is and has no desire to change that. And she doesn't hang around people a lot, not because she isn't able to, but because she'd actively rather choose to turn them down just so she could stay home by herself, which is completely different from Bochi, who wants to make friends but can't. But the biggest difference, I think, is that Ryo just has a butt ton of confidence in herself, which is basically the exact opposite of Bochi, whose self-esteem is in the pits constantly, and the few times she does show any confidence, it's immediately shot down. This leads to some of the funniest moments where Bochi is crying in her box because she's not as good at the guitar she thought she was, while well, Nijiga tries to comfort her by saying she's not very good either, and Ryo is just like, well I'm very good. She just generally doesn't give a crap about what other people think, while in contrast, Bochi cares a lot. And while they both act like total weirdos, Bochi does it mostly unintentionally, while Ryo mostly does it to mess with people because she thinks it'd be funny. Ryo is a loner. While Bochi's just lonely. The other characters serve to contrast Bochi in different ways as well. Like Kira, who seems to be the polar opposite of Bochi by being so extroverted, she blinds people. She also has an infatuation with Ryo, which I expected to be annoying and overdone, but it only lasted like two episodes before fading away into the background. It was surprisingly a very small part of her character, and she managed to stand on her own two feet, which was very nice. But something really interesting I noticed about her is that despite being the most extroverted out of everyone by far, <laughs> She actually has a lot in common with Bochi. They're polar opposites, but they actually share some traits. They both make a lot of dumb decisions out of panic that they can't escape from, have their own form of nervous breakdowns, can't seem to stop taking L's, and have mentally unstable personalities. Heck, Kida has a bunch of scenes where she almost turns into Bochi. Kida is just a lot louder about all this, while Bochi mostly internalizes it and it happens a lot more frequently to her. Kida's an extrovert, but all that means is that she likes going outside and socializing with people. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's perfect at it or doesn't have weaknesses. And what I also appreciate is that it shows that she isn't immune to insecurities either. It's subtle, but as the series progresses, it shows how she's constantly underselling her own abilities. She doesn't exactly think too highly of herself either, and has moments where she apologizes for being an inconvenience to others. Heck, she even hates her own name, and despite improving her guitar skills drastically and working really hard on it, she doesn't even bring that up and only concentrates on making sure people see how great Bochi is. And I think it's because of all this, that despite them being polar opposites, they ended up getting along with each other surprisingly well. And by the end, it seems like she's actually the one who understands Bochi the most out of the main group. I just appreciate that there's more to her than just being a typical overly happy girl with a one-dimensional personality. But again, this is a very subtle thing that you only really pick up on if you're looking for it. And I actually appreciate that, since it doesn't shove it into your face and make it super obvious, and instead just let the characters be. And finally, there's Nijika, who surprisingly was the most normal person in the group. Which is funny because based on her design with the Ahoge everyone decided looked exactly like a Dorito, I would have assumed she'd be the dumb one. But she was actually one of the more grounded and responsible characters and the dumb one turned out to be Ryo. She basically balances out the rest of the characters' more exaggerated personalities by acting as the straight man and is sort of the core of the group in a way. She is extroverted but only to a degree and is definitely the most mature out of everyone there. And while she and Bochi share the same dream, Nijika is the one who first acted on it, essentially being the main driving force behind everything as Bochi starts learning to do that gradually. 
Oh, and of course there's Bochi's little sister who encapsulates the chaotic innocence of a younger sibling who calls out everything Bochi does. But she's a child, so of course she doesn't understand why what she's saying would be bad because it's true and that's what makes it so painful. But in the end, all the characters in this group serve to contrast different aspects of Bochi's character. I liked all of them, and there's a lot more to each of their personalities than just a basic trope. They're all very well written and help Bochi in different ways as the story goes through and develops. Which brings us to the final question. Does Bochi grow? Actually, yeah. Granted, it's not a total 180 by the end of the season. Social anxiety isn't something that you can just get rid of that easily, and she still has a long way to go. But it is nice to see that the story doesn't just let Bochi be stagnant either. It's always putting her into situations that challenge her to face her anxiety head on. Moments where she has to decide whether she wants to stay the same, or to push through despite how scared she is, even if it's just simple things like being able to serve a customer and look them in the eye. One of my favourite examples of this actually is the episode where Bochi has tickets she's supposed to sell to meet their quota, but she doesn't know anyone to invite except her parents. Not being able to bring herself to admit to them that she doesn't have any friends to invite, even though they already know, she instead turns them down and chooses to handle it herself. This is great because the story doesn't give her the easy way out and she was the one who put herself in that situation. And at this point, Bochi has ran off and is all by herself again, avoiding any of the messages from her bandmates because she feels like she can't respond to them until she did what she promised she'd do, but she can't do that for long since they have practiced later that day. So now she feels like she's made a mistake, is super overwhelmed, and feels like there's no way out for her. And then she meets one of the best characters in the show. Alcohol lady! That's right, Bochi meets a random drug woman who solves all the problems. Okay, I was only partly joking with that. She does meet her, but she doesn't solve Bochi's problems for her. But she does happen to be an experienced guitarist herself in her own band, and can sympathize with Bochi's situation. So after Bochi tells her the problem, she just goes, Yep, that's easy. Let's just do a street performance right here and sell tickets to anyone who's interested. The thing about this though is that Bochi has never performed in front of a live crowd with lots of people before, and the one time she did, she was hiding in a cardboard box. Now, it's not avoidable. And Drunk Lady, despite what she seems like, was actually perceptive enough to pick up on Bochi's nervousness. Granted, Bochi also lied to her about selling her guitar because she felt like a fraud, so it wasn't too difficult, but she actually offers her good advice. She just tells Bochi that she can close her eyes if she really wants, since she's fully capable of doing that, but to also keep in mind that she's not in combat with the people in front of her, and to not get it twisted with who her enemies are, essentially leaving it up to Bochi on how she wants to handle this, but giving her a gentle nudge in the right direction. So Bochi starts playing the song, and of course she's nervous and keeps her eyes shut, but throughout the song, as someone shouts their encouragement and she slowly starts to open her eyes, it hits her that they aren't there to judge her, but because they want to see her play. And when she finishes, she sees the happy faces of the people who enjoyed it and smiles. Turns out that Drunk Lady does actually have some wisdom, and can act as a good mentor for Bochi, so long as alcohol isn't involved. And it's because of this that Bochi gets her first two fans and makes a new friend. And those fans actually go out of their way to show up in future performances too, which is just the sweetest thing ever. Bochi's entire journey is largely of her trying her best to be better. Even if it's something that would seem small to us, she feels proud of herself for achieving just that, because to her, it is a big deal, and you just can't help but root for that. Other great scenes that also develop this are the quieter moments, the soda machine, a place we consistently return to time and time again and the characters just talk for a little bit, reflecting on everything that just happened and what they hope to do in the future. But I think by far the most important scenes in the show are the performances. Every time the band is about to start playing, the show takes on a very different tone. All the goofiness from the previous scenes are gone, and instead it takes itself more seriously, as if it's real. When the music kicks in and they start, they put in the utmost effort into these performances to make sure they come across as authentic, even referencing real performers just to get all the little intricacies right, down to the individual notes the characters are playing, giving it a sort of artfulness and polish to it that pushes these scenes to another level. Heck, even during the scene where they mucked up and made a bunch of mistakes, they felt exactly like the kind of mistakes that a real amateur band would make on stage. And despite the fact that their performances were almost no actual dialogue, there's visual storytelling here. Even just from the way the characters' expressions shift, to the way the camera moves, to how they glance at each other when something happens, somehow you could watch through the entire thing and it never gets boring. And they do all this because they know it's important. Because while these scenes act as an emotional climax for each section of the story, more than anything, they're the scenes that show how much Bochi's grown the most. From hiding in a box, to performing properly during an audition, to looking up at the crowd for the first time, to redeeming their failed performance by actively snapping everyone else out of it and leading them into the next song, to performing in front of their entire school. 
Every time she performs on stage, she's made progress from how she did last time and gets more confident with what she's doing, and that shows in her performance as her true skills with the guitar really begins to show itself. And in the final performance, right as Bochi's about to do her guitar solo, not only does her guitar go slightly out of tune, but the string snaps. But despite all the pressure of needing to fix things in front of everyone, both her and Kida managed to quickly improvise on the spot, both showing how hard Kida had worked to get to this point within such a short amount of time, and how much more confident Bochi has gotten on stage to think of a solution this quickly and be able to pull it off successfully. These moments are satisfying, and it is amazing to see how much they had learned within the span of the series to still deliver an amazing performance. And for Bochi, after realizing how far she had come, it's cathartic. There's a kind of sweet melancholy, as it shows the final shots of the show that parallel the beginning. It's the same thing, but different. Even before and during the last performance, we see the different places that Bochi was all alone at, and now they're empty, showing that Bochi isn't bound to those places like she used to, ending the series on a heartwarming note as it comes full circle. Granted, this is also contrasted by her finishing the performance, only to be put in the spot in panic and dive off the flipping stage! But that gave me one of the most hilariously epic moments in the entire show, so that redeems everything. Can we please talk about how much of a ballsy decision this was for her? Yeah, she ended up failing, but the fact is, she still took that risk of going for a stage dive, which is something she'd never do at the beginning in a million years, and the fact that she was willing to go for it regardless whether it'd work or not takes guts. You gotta respect that at the very least. But I think in the end, this scene goes to show that while she is growing, she's still far from being the super confident and outgoing person she wants to be. And you know what? I'm okay with that. At its core, this is still a slice of life that knows what it's trying to do and it does that to the best that it could be. I'm mostly just watching for the fun and relatable shenanigans Bochi gets into anyways, and her being a socially awkward mess is part of the reason I enjoy watching her. So long as it's able to continue doing that in new and creative ways and has enough progress to me that it feels worthwhile, then I'm honestly fine with it taking its time. She's already made substantial progress from how things were in the beginning, and I look forward to the day she can shine on stage and show the world what she's really capable of with a smile. But until then, I'll just enjoy the journey for what it is. It's just really fun. Oh, just like Konosuma! Patrons at certain tier levels can make me say whatever they want me to, and if you think that sounds like a bad idea, it's because it is. I regret everything. Neko Brandon is coming soon, guys. Don't you worry. Nya, nya, nya. I won't get bullied on my own Discord server. I just don't have good taste in waifus. Ram is back waifu! Ah, da, da. I did it. I discovered the secret to creating catgirls. All you have to do is...